Hey everybody, welcome to another GMG review. Today we're taking a look at Order Battle Tome Lumineth Realm Lords, the sequel, the 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 Realm Lordening, the <laughs> the crank two of um, Battle Tomes, where this is a follow up Battle Tome to kind of the slim back Battle Tome that came in the Realm Lords like starter set, where you got some Dawn Riders and some Venari Spearmen, I think, uh, and the Light of Altharian. This is kind of like the sequel. This is the other half of the book with a whole bunch of new models, um, a whole bunch of new rules for those models, a couple of new battalions that include those models. Uh, but for the most part, this is information that is already like the core stuff in here. I'm not gonna do any of the artifacts and stuff because it's exactly the same. Oh, sorry, I probably will do a couple that apply to the new, the newer stuff. Um, but everything else in here, your allegiance abilities, it's all identical to the battle tome you have already. Um, and if you own the previous battle tome, there's actually a, another supplement I'm reviewing today called Broken Realms Techlist, which you can go up in the cards and check out, um, that has all of the new information in this book in it. So this book is strictly for people who are going to start Lumineth Realm Lords for the first time. Um, if you're a completionist, though, you're probably going to get it anyway. Uh, and the idea here is this is like a complete tome. So it's not necessary if you have the other one already and you'll be like able to have the street cred of being OG, you can go pick up the Techless book instead and that'll also give you a brand new Cities of Sigmar army, a campaign, a whole bunch of other stuff. So you got some options here. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they basically just, they put the other half of the book in uh, and we'll go through it. And what a half it is. Oh my God. If you thought Lumineth Realm Lords were obnoxious to play against already, uh, as of course we've proved uh, with Owen's army several times, so you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be so excited about all the new stuff. So what's in here? There is some new fluff, obviously not fluff. I, I don't I hate when I I use that word because other people use that word. I hate that word because it kind of cheapens the idea that the, the background isn't important. There's a new background for all the new things that are in here, obviously. All the raw scrolls and unit types get their own little story and stuff like that. Uh, it also has some kind of current event stuff happening in Broken Realms that are mentioned now as well. And you can see here some of the cool new models. This big, big flying fox boy. Get the new sword masters, which I'll use old sword masters for my Cities of Sigmar army. <laughs> I'll use my OG sword masters and just stick them on 32 mil bases. Uh, they're the Venari Blade Lords, or the Sinari Blade Lords, sorry. Uh, big new cool terrain piece, wind riders, big giant banner. If you didn't think the flags were big enough, then there's a giant flag for you to, to, to hang out with your dudes. Um, yeah, and some new, of course, uh, kangaroo riders too whose names I'm instantly going to forget. So, so unless I have them in front of me, remember, I'm going to call them what they look like because I'm a does what it says in the tin kind of guy. Uh, so yeah, so we'll jump into the background here. Obviously talking about the Waken of Slanesh, all the stuff going on with Marathi because she's being terrible, as is tradition. Uh, they do mention Tyrion quite a bit, and there's some folks in here that are from Tyrion's kind of elven faction, but this does still focus primarily on Teclis's sort of faction of the Hishian elves. Um, and yeah, the, there's going to be like, this is the new stuff, the killing wind of Hish, basically the different elements we've seen stone, earth, uh, now we're into wind. Uh, and of course there's going to be fire and water as well, probably. So expect there, this is not the last time stuff's going to get added to this book. Uh, cause they seem to be doing like an elemental magic thing with wind being the big focus right now. Nice uh, paint job in red actually this time of all the other stuff. Uh, there's two versions of this model, just like the stone man, the wind man, and obviously we're gonna see a fire and a water at some point. These are all elementals basically, the stone elemental and water elemental. Um, the wind elemental has a character and non-character version. So you, you can build that kit two different ways. And you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna have four of that guy, guaranteed, cause he's obnoxious. Uh, so nice big color section. And yeah, we've got we've got two of the four elements kind of taken care of here in the Realm Lords. Here's our wind. There's Lir Lir Lirior Ulthral, the Warden of Imetrica. Oh god, these words are gonna kill me. Um, Hurricane Wind Mage and El Elania and Elathor, the Eladen and Elahir of um, this. If you don't know who that is, that's a, a pair of, they're basically Elrond's kids in the Lord of the Rings, his two sons that um, go off hunting orcs. And this, this idea of twin elves that fight together is not new. This is the, um, the Warhammer version of that, basically. Uh, and also Tyrion and Teclas. I should say that that's like, that's, uh, why am I even surprised? It's not even new in Warhammer, <laughs> the idea that there's twin elves going off and fighting, um, saying that there is no new ideas. Uh, the Venari Lord Regent is the other way of building that cool character model. You get your Huracan Wind Chargers, the Sonari Calgrave. So this is, the Sonari Calgrave is basically, um, 
a, a lore master at this point. I this looks like it's replaced all the Hoth stuff. So I know that the like the lore the, that that was like a, a keyword for a while. Was it the temple, the lore master, whatever the the Hoth stuff was? Um, it it seems to have these seem to be like officially in the background replacing that stuff. So all the the Tower of Hoth stuff seems to be gone now. But the Blade Lords replacing the Sword Masters, the Snelly Calgrave replacing the Lore Master. Um, and there's even a, there's even, not the Lore Master, the, um, the Archmage. And then, so this is the Archmage. There's a Lore Master type two with a sword that's like a, a battle mage. So all those miniatures feel like they're being replaced by this. There is the Scenario Lore Seeker, who's basically the Lore Master of Hoth. And you can see the Blade Lords, which are basically Sword Masters. There's even a, I could even use my old bolt throwers, my old high elf bolt throwers if I want to, the Venari Star Shard Ballista. What? Break out your old models, kids. The Cities of Sigmar are getting the, the low-rent version of this stuff for sure. Um, big army shot. And then let's jump into some new stuff. So like I said, Allegiance abilities, this, this, I'm not going to go into this stuff in great detail because obviously otherwise, this is now a very big book. This is like reviewing Stormcast. This is all quite, quite long. There's no updates that I've been able to spot. I combed through this with Owen and we couldn't see anything new. Teclis' War Scrolls the same, everything exactly the same. And the advertising Warhammer community was the same as well. So no updates. So if you're hoping that Teclis, like his like casting and stuff got fixed, mm, nope, he's the same. <laughs> Everything's still super great. Aether Quartz works the same. The Cathedars uh, Absorbed Astaire works the same. Latent Reactions pick two. And the Great Nations as well. Uh, so you got your uh, battle traits, command traits, this is for all the Venari stuff. Uh, the Sinari now, so new stuff. So battle traits, Masters of the Teclamentari. Deep thinkers, at the start of your hero phase, you can pick a friendly Sinari wizard and declare that instead of casting any spells that phase, they'll contemplate, just sit and think like a slan. Uh, if you do so in your next hero phase, when a friendly Sinari wizard that contemplated in your last hero phase attempts to cast its first spell in the current hero phase, then it's auto-cast with a casting roll of nine and can't be unbound. So basically every other turn you're techless if you want to be, if you want to be. You just think about it real good and then be like, mm, nope, it goes off. No matter what, it's a nine. Uh, you can baby techless it up with the Sinari. Command traits for them. Um, you've got your Sinari generals only. So again, this is the, the Sinari lore master, the two new characters. Uh, Spellmaster, once each of your hero phases, you can reroll one filled casting roll for this general. A lore Master, you know an extra spell. And War Master, if this general is part of your um, army on the battlefield, 4 plus get an extra command point. Uh, they get some cool artifacts as well. The Phoenix Stone, if a friendly Luminous Realm Lord's hero is slain within 12 inches before removing this uh, model from play, roll a die. On a 6 plus, they're not slain. All their wounds are allocated to them are healed, and they... Uh, uh, remain um, and they're just negated. So like everything's just everything's just negated at that point. So cool, a six plus just don't die and get all your wounds back. Uh, clutch, but still neat. Uh, silver wand, attempt to cast an extra spell, so cast two. And then blade of leaping gold, pick one of the bear's melee weapons, add three to the attack characteristic of that weapon. So basically, you've got some warp, some traits and stuff that are for the archmage, and you've got some that are for the lore master. I'm gonna keep calling them that because that's what they used to be called and my brain can't absorb new information this quickly. So, <laughs> so bear with me that I will continue to do that throughout this review. Uh, I'm gonna call Blade Masters, Sword Masters, probably until something else comes along and deletes my memory of that. Huracan Traits. Uh, so this is for all the, the kangaroo riders and the, um, the big like uh, the riders for the, the, the wind stuff, the wind mage and stuff. So battle traits move like the wind. Um, when you make a pile and move, so and what's interesting is normally this would be in the allegiance abilities, but they've cut it out and stuck it in the this part. Um, so when you make a pile and move with a hurricane model, if it does not have to finish the move at least, as, uh, sorry, it does not have to finish the move at least as close to the nearest enemy model. In addition, when you make a pile and move with them, it can um, if you made a charge move in the same turn, it can fly and it can fly and moves an extra three inches when it piles in. So your, basically, your kangaroos can charge. Um, they get into their charge range. When they pile in, they can move six inches and just go anywhere they want. So you just place them wherever you want to fight so you can minimize the amount of models that are fighting back. You just go boop and then just jump to where, you know, the enemy unit is a big snake, basically, and they're only going to be able to pile so many models over. Very neat. Um, command try, and they fly, too. If, in the turn that they charge, they can go over the enemy. So you can just charge in and then jump over the back, too, if you want. Um, command traits, Lords of the Air, so for the Wind Mage only. Uh, Grand Wind Rider, replace their Wind Leap ability with. Um, <laughs> if a friendly Wind Charger's unit starts a move wholly within 24 of this general, when it makes that move, that unit has a move characteristic of 16 and can fly. So, cool. <laughs> 
Um, all your units within 24 um, basically have a move characteristic of 16 and can fly. So let's talk about who's a wind charger. Uh, basically, it looks like you're probably adding two inches to the core moves of everybody because they move 14 normally. So all your all your regular um, like basically this guy gives them his movement allowance within 24. So the hurricane and wind chargers become 16 inch move. I think that's it, everything else is already yeah is already a longer move. Now you wouldn't care. Are you guys wind chargers? No, but you're both Sonari and Venari. Um, and then you get Swift uh, plus three moves, so you can move up to 19 then. And then Lore Master, no extra spell from the Lord of the Winds. Artifacts power, your Gifts of the Winds. Wind Blast Fan, once per battle at the start of the enemy movement phase, uh, you can pick an enemy unit within three of the bear. That unit must make a normal move and retreat. So you just go Hadouken and like shoot them backwards. Windstone, once per battle uh, in your shooting phase, you can pick an enemy unit within 18 of the bear invisible and roll a die. On a one, nothing happens. Two to three, it's, or sorry, two to four, it's five mortal wounds. On a five plus, it's D6 mortal wounds. So you do, uh, you almost always do three. It's almost better to do three because you could do less. You almost always want to roll a two to four. And then buffeting <laughs> Asparagillum. What, just, what are you doing to me, Games Workshop? Roll dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to the bear on a five plus it's negated. Couldn't you just say wound shrug? Take a wound shrug as your gift. Uh, Alarith, so you've got your all your Alarith stance stuff. Um, your command traits for your Alarith generals and stuff, and they've already existed. So Lord of the Winds, this is the new one. Um, you've got Teclas and Hurricane and Wizards. So Teclas gets all these spells too, which is neat. Uh, Freezing Squall, cast on five. If successfully cast, pick an enemy unit within 12 inches of the caster invisible to them. That unit cannot run until your next hero phase. Neat. Howling Gale, cast on seven. Pick an enemy unit within 12 invisible. They can't use or benefit from command abilities until your next hero phase. Oh my god, that can be so obnoxious. Giving Teclas all this extra stuff just feels like... Blech. So you take your enemy's Death Star unit and just go, if you're within 12, you can't use command abilities. Guiding Flurries, cast on 7. Uh, pick a friendly Luminous Realm Lords unit, armed with missile weapons, uh, wholly within 12. Uh, the cast are invisible, and then say if the spell lofts the missiles or directs the missiles. If it lofts the missiles until the next hero phase, add 6. If it directs, add plus 1 to hit rolls for attacks me with missile weapons, not unit. That's pretty cool for your bows. Um, yeah, I mean, why not? Also, you're going to see that the foxes later on. Giving them this extra 6 inches of range is pretty cool. Calming Zephyr uh, has a casting of 6. If successfully cast, pick a friendly Luminous Realm Lord unit wholly with an 18 to the caster. Invisible. Heal D3 wounds allocated to them and no battle shock. Burning Simoom uh, has a casting of 6. If cast, pick an enemy within 12 invisible and roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit. For every 6, they take a mortal wound. If the casting roll is 10 or more, on a 5, they take a mortal wound. Sure, 60 goblins, I'm techless. Everybody on a, mortal, on a 5 takes a mortal wound. <laughs> Hooray! Transporting Vortex, cast on 8, pick a friendly Realm Lord unit within 12 of the caster invisible, remove them from the battlefield and set them up anywhere else, but they can't move. So not within 9, can't move. Lord of the High Peaks, you've already seen. And Lord of Hish, we've already seen. This is all the Alarith stuff and the Venari stuff. More color sections. And the shrines, this is the new um, train piece. It's basically a garrison for a single hero. It's a bit like the blood trine, the corn thing, where a single hero can stand on it and use it. Um, so a non-monster hero can garrison it, and they become the Shrine Guardian. Once per turn, you can reroll a single casting, dispelling or unbinding roll for a friendly Realms Lord unit within 12. And then from the second battle round on, that range is increased to 12 inch, but to 24, um, if they channel the Shrine's power. Um, and then Shrine Guardian, once per turn, you can use a command ability with this train feature Shrine Guardian without spending a command point. So basically, you can stick this in the middle of your army, stick your archers around it, and he can just volley fire them every turn for free. Which is nice, I mean, it's a free train, pe um, free, not financially free, but obviously you don't pay points for it, right? So just having an extra thing, it'll keep your Cathlar alive. I, I, sticking the Cathlar in this is probably what's going to happen. So your Cathlar can shoot out her, like, you feel sad abilities. She'll be minus one to hit plus one armor, because she's garrisoning a thing. Um, and then, I don't think if you garrison, you still get Lookout Sir, though. I think you lose your Lookout Sir, because I think it's replaced by garrisoning, because you become the train feature. Um, and obviously, ranges in line of sights to the train feature, but whatever. You, you're, you're getting some stuff for free. Immetrica, Sire. 
Uh, and I can't remember if any of these nations are new. I don't think they are. I'm going to check Teclas because the nice thing is by, by looking in the Teclas book, I can see exactly what is new and what is not. Do, 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 do. Venari stuff, Hurricane stuff, Spell Lores. The Path to Glory, the War Scrolls. It's almost easier for me just to look in this book. I think the nations are all the same. Yep, I think that stuff's the same. They reprint the Allegiance abilities, the Venari stuff. That's Shining Company, Spell Lures, Shrine Luminor. Yeah, Alumnia, Helon are the two new ones. That's right. So Sire is not one of the two new ones. Let's see at the back here. Alumnia. <clears throat> so another great nation. There's two more, so there's six now, basically. And these ones tie into the, the air stuff. So the Alumnia one is claim the field for their ability. Uh, after armies are set up and before the first battle round begins, up to three friendly Alumnia Venari or Alumnia Sinari units can make an normal move but can't run. So you can advance your line a bit. Um, seize the moment. If you use this command ability in your charge phase, if you do so, pick a friendly Illumina unit that ran, they can still charge. So you can sp buy off the run, the no run charge ability, basically. Uh, command traits, they must have this one. Uh, burning gaze, that's sort of the com combat phase, pick an enemy within three. Uh, and the invisible to the general, roll a dice on a two plus ticket mortal wound. He shoots eye lasers and then artifact waystone once per battle in your movement phase instead of making a normal move. Uh, you can pick a point in the battlefield within 12. If you do so, remove the bear from the battlefield and set them up uh, again within one of that point and more than three from the enemy. So you just go, like, you bamf. You're Nightcrawler, you go bamf, you bamf over there. And then a Helon, uh, Gale of Killing Shafts. <laughs> Add one to the... Add one of the attack characteristic of missile weapons used uh, by Helon models or within three inches of an enemy unit. So, plus one attacks because you're up close. That's kind of cool, danger close. Uh, you get two shots instead of one. Uh, command ability, Gone Like the Wind. You can use this ability uh, if your name is Rut Butler and, oh wait. Um, you can use command ability at the end of the command phase. If you do so, pick one friendly heal on unit that fought. That was a Gone with the Wind joke. No one's gonna get that. Um, and it's only within 12 of a friendly heal on hero. That unit can make a normal move, but cannot run if it, it can, however, retreat. So basically you get a command, um, command phase movement for somebody. Which is cool, you can pull people out of combat before they need to fight. Um, you can make them charge again by pulling them out of combat. Lots of, lots of neat things you could do there. Uh, and then Sky Race Grand Champion is your required command trait. Once per battle, you can reroll one run roll and one charge roll and one casting roll for this general. Um, once per battle. So each of those things once per battle. So three things. Basically three rerolls, that's, that's neat. Artifact power, uh, Metalith Dust. Once per battle at the start of the com combat phase, you can pick an enemy unit within three of the bearer. If you do so, subtract one from hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of the phase. So you can just curse somebody. That's pretty neat. Just the turn that the big thing happens and you get charged, um, you can just be like, uh, nope, pocket sand. You're minus one all your stuff. Uh, we got a cool Baleful Realm Gate style mission. Some battle plans for the story stuff, the Path to Glory rules. And then War Scroll Battalions. And again, there are a couple of new ones. And I will quickly just check which ones are new. Because that way I don't accidentally speak out of turn. There we go. The Battle Host, the big one's the new one. Or it's been modified basically to include all the, the um, Hurricane units. It requires you to take a Venali Lord Regent, a Venali Banner Blade, 0 to 3 Sonari Heroes, 0 to 1 Owl Earth Temple, 0 to 1 Hurricane Temple, 1 to 2 Orland Legions, 1 to 2 Dawn Rider Lances, 1 Blade Lord Host, and a Star Shard Battery. If this battalion is part of your army, at the start of your hero phase, roll a dice for each hero, and on a 6 they get an extra command points. So basically, if you take all the battalions together, bonus stuff. Teclian Vanguard, this is Teclas' boys. Uh, we got Archmage Teclas and Selenar. 0 to 1 Light of Eltharian, an Alarth Temple, 1 to 3 Orlin Legions, and 2 Dawn Rider Legions. So this is the, the one that adds his stuff together. It's the old one. Uh, and then the Hurricane Temple, Star Shard Battery, and Blade Lord Host are the new ones. So the Hurricane Temple, 
It's a Hurricane Wind Mage, Severeth, the Lord of the Seventh Wind, and a, or a generic Hurricane Spirit of the Wind, and one to three unit of Wind Chargers. So it's one to three units of the Kangaroos, a Wind Mage, and that. This one will be popular because if you're going with this like insano shooting army, um, it's going to cost you... It's going to get you an extra Relic, first of all, although the Hurricanes can't have Relics because they're not leaders. Uh, it's going to cost you, where is that? Next page is all in the point values. We're going to have 180 points. But what do you get for this? Whirling Tornadoes. If a unit from this battalion is wholly within 12 of a hero from the same battalion, at the start of the combat phase, the models in that unit count as having made a charge move in the same turn. Pretty cool. So you always count as charging for your big piling and stuff. That means you always get your extra 3-inch jump. Um, but it makes them a drop, too. A Star Shard Battery, it's a Calgrave and three to five units of Ballistas. So three Ballistas, oh my god. I mean, they are... How do you get one? I guess you'd have to be playing a giant game. Because you only really get four artillery pieces, I'm pretty sure. And it is definitely artillery. The... Show me the artillery. Yeah, it's 100 point artillery. Ward Barrier, if a Star Shard Ballista unit from your battalion is within three of another Star Shard Ballista unit from the same battalion, replace its Warding Lantern ability with... A five plus shrug instead of a six. In addition, add one of the attack characteristic of the star shard bolts if it doesn't move in the same turn. So you get a huge, uh, well, huge, you get a 17.5% increase to your wound shrug, which is cool. And plus one of the star shard bolts is that tax is actually the big thing. And that one is how many extra doll redos? Star shard battery is 120. And again, it makes it a drop too, a single drop. And then Blade Lord Host. Now these guys can be battle line. And they're incredibly baller. They're two wound murder swords, these three sword masters. Um, and you get a unit as battle line for every scenario hero that you have. So that means that if you took a scenario hero and two of these guys, uh, you can reroll one hit rolls of one for attacks made with melee weapons by the unit from the battalion. The target enemy unit that's made a charge move in the same turn. So they get the calculated response. If you get charged, you reroll ones. That's kind of handy. And it's, another, it's an extra artifact for your dudes. You got Teclas, he's the same. Light of Altharian, he's the same. Lyriel Uthrali, uh, sorry, yeah, Lyriel Uthrali, the Warden of Metrica. Uh, he's the new uh, Rider Man, and he's pretty cool. He's got his big sword. It's called Demon Bane, uh, and it shoots a gun. It's a 2 plus 2 plus minus 2 D3 damage, because it's basically, it's basically Sunfang. It's basically Tyrion's old sword. Uh, and then it's a 3 inch range, 1 attack, 2 plus, 2 plus, minus uh, 2 D3 damage for stabbing. But against Chaos and Demons, it is automatically flat 3 damage, which is pretty cool. Uh, his region swords, 5 attacks, 2s and 3s, minus 1, 1 damage. And his horns and claws on his uh, riding beastie are 4 attacks, 3s and 4s, 1 damage. 16 inch move, 6 wounds, 3 plus save, and 9 bravery. So he's still a squishy elf, only 6 wounds. Um, he has the purest Aether Quartz, though. He's got the best stuff. He gets the goods. They give him the top shelf, not cup with any baby powder at all. Subtract one from hit rolls that, uh, for attacks that target this model and add one to the casting roll when it attacks greater power of Hish. If this model is part of a Realm Lord's army and uses its last Aether Quartz reserve, this ability cannot be used for the rest of the battle. So you want to hold onto your Aether Quartz, basically, forever to keep the minus one to hit um, and plus one to cast. Well, for that spell only. And he's got Sun Metal Weapons, if he rolls a 6 to hit, it does a mortal wound, and the attack sequence ends, so his, uh, all of his weapons, basically, are Sun Metal Weapons. Uh, but not the amount of attacks, obviously, because that would be too sweet. <laughs> it doesn't mean you have a bunch of, uh, like, potentially auto wounds. And then Voice of Tyrion, if Teclas isn't here, he's the boss, but he speaks with Tyrion's voice. Um, at the start of your hero phase, if Teclas is not part of your army on a 2+, plus, get an extra command point. So. He's the dude you take when you don't take Teclas, I guess, uh, and want to get extra CPs. He's a wizard, because all the elves are, and he's got greater power of Hish. He can cast an Unbind 1. Cast on a 7, if successful, pick D3 friendly Realm Lords units with the Sun Metal Weapons ability um, that are wholly within 18 of the cast or invisible. Until your next hero phase, you do uh, Mortal Wounds on 5s instead of 6s. So that's pretty good for your Spearmen. Um, and having Sun Metal Weapons is not bad. Now the Sword Masters don't have Sun Metal Weapons, though. They, theirs are just made for moon metal or something. I don't know. Some type of star metal, maybe. Uh, your Lord Regent, he's the generic version of this guy. Two inches less movement um, and one less bravery. He's got his Regent swords, the same. Horns and claws are the same. Uh, he also has purest Aether Quartz, which is cool. 
and also has greater power of Hish, and also has some metal weapons. He's just a light version of Lyrion, or Leary or sorry, but he basically just doesn't have the voice of Tyrion. Uh, doesn't have Demon Bane, and has slightly less stats. The Venari Banner Blade, to dude with the biggest flag ever, he's a uh, he's a uh, six move, and then just five wounds. He's got basically like kill me elf stats, but a three plus save, which is nice. And Bravery eight. His sword's got four attacks, twos and threes, minus one, one damage. He's carrying the World Banner. This suspiciously sounds like the, the World Banner from an old game. Um, add one to the Bravery of all the Realm Lords units with a Holy Within 18. Uh, add three instead of one to any that are within three of any enemy units. So um, if those Bane Blades, uh, Banner Blade is within three. So as soon as he gets stuck in, everybody gets plus three Bravery. Normally it's just plus one. In addition, once per battle, at the start of the, uh, any phase, you can say they'll draw upon the power of the world banner. If you do so, roll a dice for each enemy unit within 18. If the roll is equal to or less than the number of current battle round, they take D3 mortal wounds and subtract one from their hit rolls. So if you save this to the end of the game, this guy can plant his banner, and basically on a 1 to 5 or a 1 to 4, depending on when you pop it, um, everyone's minus 1 to hit and takes D3 mortal wounds. That's pretty cool. Um, and then Sun Metal Weapons, he's got the unmodified sixes turn into immortal wounds. So four chances to fish for a six and turn his attack to a mortal wound. Sentinels are the same, Wardens are the same. Now obviously these guys both have Sun Metal Weapons, which means that they're able to be turned into five plus hits with those cool new generals. Dawn Riders, the same. Your Bolas die, it's got two attacks. So that battalion that gives it three shots is a pretty significant increase, right? That's a 50% increase in their output. Uh, threes and threes minus two D3 damage with a 30 inch range and 100 points. So four of them or 400 points, they'd have um, the rewarding lanterns give them a six plus wound shrug against wounds or mortal wounds. So they'd have a five plus wound or mortal wound uh, shrug and you'd be, sh you'd be pouring out three each. So 12 threes and threes minus two D3 damage shots. That's a pretty serious shooting like Death Star for 400 points. And it can touch almost the whole board. Once per battle, when you pick this unit to shoot, you can say it's going to fire its blinding bolts. Now, this is the special shot. If you do, uh, units that are hit by attacks made by blinding bolts are dazzled in the end of the turn, they're minus one to hit. And it cannot be dazzled more than once per turn. So, and they're all individual units. So if you don't take a big, a single big unit, take individual ones, you can do those individually. So four times per game, you can shoot somebody with a minus one to hit. Messenger Hawk is sort of the shooting phase. You can pick a Realm Lords unit and wholly within, sorry, one enemy unit wholly within no, sorry, not even holy. Within 24, of a friendly Realm's Lord hero and prick a friendly Star Shard Ballista within 24 um, of that hero. If you do so, add one of the hit rolls for the Ballistas uh, and to the target of that enemy until the start of the phase. So basically, the hero can call in fire. He goes, broken arrow or whatever, and calls in a fire support strike, and now you're hitting on twos. Um, and that's the throw of the shooting phase. So as long as you've got a hero to spot for them, they're actually hitting on twos. Twos and threes minus two D3 damage. And you can still volley fire them if they're a unit. So, yeah, maybe these guys sit around the Cathalar in the um, in the tower and are obnoxious. So definitely worth doing. I mean, three or four of these bolt throwers hitting on twos with three shots each. That's 520 points to make them 12 shots on twos. Twos and threes minus two D3 damage. And then four times per game, you can also make somebody minus to hit and dazzle them. And then Venari Blade Lords, sweet, six inch move, four plus save, uh, two wounds each, and bravery seven. So these are your new sword masters. Uh, their Sun Metal Great Blade can attack in two modes. If, it, uh, if you want to do the perfect strike, it auto hits with one attack at two inch range, two plus to wound, minus two, one damage. So you can just really stab super good, or you can do a flurry of blows. It has a number of attacks equal to the enemy models within two of that model. Um, so basically, yeah. Uh, you're gonna make a lot of attacks. Threes and threes, no rend though, and one damage. And then Sun Metal Dual Blades is on the Seneschal, and he gets three attacks, twos and threes, minus one, one damage. So he doesn't get the Perfect Strike or Flurry Blows. They're Guardians, roll a dice before you allocate a wound or mortal wound to a friendly scenario model within three inches of any friendly units with this ability, and on a two plus it redirects into them. Uh, the Sword Masters is the, the, the alternate fire. And then Vanishimore Banners, each time this unit's affected by a spell or endless spell, roll a dice. If you do so, on a 4 plus, ignore the effects. They have a 4 plus, ignore spells. They have a better rune maw, basically, um, which can be amazing. Uh, and it's optional, so your own spells you can just choose to, to not do it with. So that's pretty great. Now, the Seneschal the can just still have a great blade, too, which is nice. 
So you can still use your old Swordmaster models, which is what I'm going to do. Um, they're great. You get one unit as battle line for every scenario hero that you have, and they're better hammer guys, pretty much. Having a reason to auto hit, going into all those negative mod armies. Uh, Cathlar is the same. Calagraves, this is your new Archmage. Uh, six inch move, five wounds, five plus save, bravery seven. It's got a sword, d3 attacks, threes and threes, minus one d3 damage. It's pretty good at fighting with its Calagrave blade, I'll be honest. And that's a Realm Scribe. Once per battle in your hero phase, instead of casting any spells um, with a friendly model with this ability, you can roll a dice. Add one to the current, uh, add the number of current battle round to the roll. On a five plus, pick a point anywhere in the battlefield. For the rest of the battle, don't take battle shock tests for Luminate units wholly within nine of that point. And add one to the casting, dispelling, and unblinding rolls for friendly Luminate Realm Lord wizards that are wholly within nine of that point. You pick the place you want to fight, and you just mark it, and then you fight real good there. Uh, you're a wizard, you can cast one on blind one, and you know Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield, and Erasure, not to be confused with the band. Uh, has a casting value of 7, pick an enemy hero within 24 of the caster. You can either inflict D3 mortal wounds that, uh, on that hero, or mark them for Erasure. However, if that hero is already marked for Erasure, they inse then instead they suffer D6 mortal wounds and are no longer marked for Erasure. So basically, you can cast on someone and be like, take these mortal wounds, or you can be like, Mm, I'll save you for later. And then you cast on them again, and they take d6 mortal wounds instead. I think you're better off just getting d3 mortal wounds every turn. Although the Calligrave can do the deep think, the deep thoughts. And then just auto cast on a 9 next turn. And then your lore seeker, this is your new lore master. Uh, he's the battle mage. So 4 plus save, 6 wounds, and bravery 8 with a move of 6. He's got an Eclipsian staff. Uh, it's basically his gun, so it's the old Hadouken from the lore master. It's 12 inch range, 2 attacks, 3s and 3s, minus 2 d3 damage, and then Lore Seeker's Blade, 4 attacks, 2s and 3s, minus 1 d3 damage. He's really good, he's actually a better fighter than the, the Lore Master was. Like, significantly. And he, and he shoots the Hadouken better, too. Um, he's a Lore Seeker. If an enemy model that bears an artifact of power is slain within 3, you get a command point. He's like, oh, look at that cool thing. Uh, lone Agent, you can add 1 to save rolls for attacks that target this model if it's more than 9 from any friendly models. So he gets a 3 plus save. In addition, instead of setting this model up on the battlefield, you can place it to one side and say that it will set up as a lone agent. Uh, if you do so at the start of the first battle round before determining who has the first turn, you must set this model up on the battlefield anywhere more than three from enemy units and not in your territory. If you set up this model or within six of an objective that has uh, no enemy units within six of it, you gain control of that objective automatically and your opponent cannot get control of it while this model is within six. What? So you can camp an objective with this guy, auto have it in the first round, and you can't take it away until he's dead. Madness. Uh, he casts once and unbinds once, and he knows Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shields. No special spell for him, but he can learn a spell from the lores. Uh, you get Aorth and the Stone Mage, your Stone Guard. They just look, I mean, they're two wounds. I guess that's still cool, but they're just, they're not, I don't think, as good as auto hit. <laughs> it's pretty great. Villanor. Uh, and then we got Elania and Elathor. So these are the Eclipsian War Mages. These are the new twins. Six inch move, eight wounds between the two of them. Three plus save and bravery eight. You'd think they'd have ten wounds as the average heroes have five each. But no, only eight. Uh, melee weapons. Altari has uh, four attacks, twos and threes, minus two. Uh, her damage is special though. It's equal to the current battle round. Huh? That's pretty cool. So on the fifth battle round... Uh, you are four attacks, twos and threes, minus two, five damage. You can do 20 damage on turn five if you're still alive. That's insane. Uh, Dinar, two attacks, threes and threes, minus one, d3 damage. So she's the mage. And the Moonbright Talons, two attacks, threes and threes, minus one, one damage. Uh, and that's their Lunal Athene. And she attacks with her Moonbright Talons. So um, she has the aspect of Kelinar. Uh, I'd want to cast and dispelling and binding rolls for this model. They're Realm Wanderers, because they're kind of like a Godric and Felix kind of pair. This model can be included in, as an ally in armies that have the Order General. In addition, if this model is within three of your general at the start of your hero phase, roll a die on a four plus, you receive a command point. However, this model can never be your general. So this is a Godric and Felix kind of thing, or Godric kind of thing now. Uh, they can be an ally. They don't restrict you from having other allies. And Eleni and El, because they're supposed to be Eldon and Ella here going around helping everybody. Uh, they're only 260 points, so you get a cool mage you can cast to, unbind to, in an order army. Um, and they know Mystic Shield, Arcane Bolt, and Salvation of Hish. They get plus one to cast and, just un and unbind all the time. 
They could do 20 damage in melee. So you just save them for late game and they walk in and just delete a unit. Um, and then sudden translocation at the end of the combat phase, roll a dice if this model's fought in that phase. If the roll is less than or, uh, the number of the current battle round or less than the number of wounds allocated to this model, heal up to D6 wounds allocated to this model and remove it from the battlefield. Then set this model up anywhere in the battlefield more than 12 from any models. If that's impossible, the model's removed from play and does not, but does not count as being slain. That's crazy. Um, as if they if they caught if they fought that phase, um, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, sorry, and also for Altari, which is the crazy sword he fights with, because um, their sword is basically like a, a living thing. Uh, once per battle in your shooting phase, you can equip Althor will unleash a blazing sunbolt. If you do so, pick a point in the battlefield within twelve and draw an imaginary straight line a millimeter wide. Uh, roll a dice for each unit that's under that. On a two plus, they suffer a number of mortal wounds equal to the current battle round. So. Yeah. So again, if you wait till turn five to unleash all this stuff um, and and fight like crazy at the end of the combat phase, you can be doing twenty wounds in melee, and every unit could take five mortal wounds. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> just just nuts. But yeah, at the end of the combat phase, if they fight during that phase, you have to roll a die. And if it's less than the number of the current battle rounds or less than the number of wounds allocated to the model, then you can heal and then we're in the battlefield and set them up again. And if it's not possible. Uh, to put them somewhere, then they count as being slain. So typically you just kind of bamf around and go other places, but you might lose them too. They might just disappear if you can't put them where they, if you can't put them anywhere in the battlefield more than 12 running models. And then, yeah, we got our Wind Mage and Wind Chargers. Uh, so the Wind Mage is the one flying the cloud. Uh, 16 inch move, five wounds, five plus save, bravery, seven. Uh, a Aspirigillum, 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 range three inches. Uh, it is two attacks, threes and threes, minus one d3 damage. It can fly, uh, has a fan of redirection, add one to saves for missile attacks to target this model. In addition, if an unmodified save roll for an attack is a six, you can inflict a mortal wound and enemy unit within nine. You just go bam, and like spink it back. You do like the, the whatchamacallit, the Jedi thing where you bounce back the attacks. Wind leap, if a friendly wind charges unit starts to move wholly within six of this model, then it can make it that move. Sorry, when it makes that move, it has a move of 16 and can fly. Um, magic. <laughs> this model is a wizard, cast one, dispels one, and it knows wind blast vortex, cast on five. If you cast it in your next shooting phase, pick an enemy unit within none of the cast and roll a dice on a two plus, that enemy suffers D3 mortal wounds. Now that sounds that doesn't sound strange because it's not like it's not a typical ability, but being able to wait until that time, until the shooting phase, to see when everything's happened, um, you can do it at any time. So you could pick, it's not at the start of your shooting phase, it's just in your next shooting phase. So if you just don't quite finish a unit off, like with your shooting, like let's say your Fox are shooting something or your Bowmen are shooting something, and you really need to get that like last extra wound, you can just be like two plus D3 mortal wounds. That's a really neat like difference. It seems really subtle, but there's so many times in a game when you just about finish something off and you just need those like last couple mortal wounds and that guy can sit next to it and then try and like kill it, right? Right, right as you're basically needing that last couple wounds. And it ignores targeting and stuff too, right? Because it's just, it's not a shooting attack, it's just a spell effect going off during the shooting phase. <clears throat> uh, your wind chargers, 14 inch move, but again, they get buffed to 16. Um, two wounds, five plus save, bravery seven. They get a bow, uh, 12 inch range, two attacks at threes and threes minus one, one damage. So it's a decent bow. And then in melee, it's one attack with a three inch range, threes and threes minus two, one damage. And it's claws on the wind, uh, the, what's it called? The. Hurricane, tree runner, sorry. Um, two attacks, uh, one inch range, threes and fours, one damage. The Seneschal uh, gets plus one to its bow attacks. So it does two attacks in melee, two attacks, and it's the bow for both profiles, so it gets two in melee and two at range. Uh, you get a standard, and then the um, standard is uh, rerolling bottle shock tests for that unit. Your arrows. Uh, you don't get cover for save rolls from them, and then go where the wind blows. When this unit makes a move, it can pass cross train features as if it could fly, but doesn't actually fly. So you wouldn't ignore like because you don't have the fly trait, you don't ignore like um, the line of sight rules for like wild woods and stuff like that. But you can still move through stuff. <laughs> All right, <laughs> oh these things, they are these things are insane. I <laughs> I can't believe these are in the game. These are going to be. Almost as hated as Teclas, and because there's a generic version, you could take unlimited of them. They're not even a behemoth or a leader, like, they're just as many as you want. 
They're not heroes though, so no more artifacts, no giving them like traits and buffs and stuff. They can't lead your army, but they're so good. All right, um, so Severeth, the character one, we've seen him spoiled a bit online. They have a 24 inch move stat. Oh, but it gets better because also they can shoot and scoot. They can move 12 inches at the end of the shooting phase because of the Spirit of the Wind, but can't run, but they can retreat. In addition, they can retreat and still charge later in the same turn. So, at the end of the shooting phase, after you've shot, you can move 24, put yourself wherever you want with an 18, and then just move back again. So you can be 30 away from the enemy if you want, if you just want to keep shooting over and over again. It's so dumb. 10 wounds, 5 will save, bravery 10 for Severeth. Uh, Enrithay the Howling Death is his bow. 18 inch range, 4 attacks, 2s and 3s, minus 3, D3 damage. So, almost ignoring, it ignores most of the armor in the game, hits on 2s, wounds on 3s, and then does D3 damage. You're basically doing four, like 3D3 wounds to something, or 3D3 damage to something every turn. In melee, he also uses the bow, so 3 inch range, 2 attacks, 2s and 3s, minus 2, D3 damage, so almost the same stats. And the swirling shards that are in his like wind tunnel, basically, D3 attacks, 3s and 3s, minus 1, 1 damage. Flies, obviously. Uh, into the Gale, roll dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model on a 5 plus is negated, so it just has a built in wound shrug. In addition, subtract 2 inches from the distance, uh, models within 3 inches of this model can pile in. While you're within 3 of this model. So you only get a 1 inch pile in against him. And then Living Cyclone, roll dice for each enemy unit that's within 3 of this model. After this model makes a charge move, on a 3 plus, they take a mortal wound. And are minus 1 to hit until the end of the next combat phase, which can't be affected by more than once. It's kind of like a tree man stomp, but for minuses to hit. Um, and you take a mortal wound too. Scour, at the start of the charge phase, you can pick a terrain feature that's within one of this model. If you do so, this model cannot charge in th that phase, but you can roll a die. On a 2+, plus, the scenery rolls for that terrain feature's war scroll cannot be used for the rest of the battle. So, uh, Loon Shrine doesn't work anymore. Uh, anything that's got barrier, any of the like terrain features, he just, he just scours it off. He like sandblasts all the detail off it, and it's just a pile of rocks now. Whatever it used to be, it is not anymore. It'll still give cover, and any scenery rules that apply to it, which are not on its war scroll, can still be used. So, if it's a barrier, for instance, if it's a type of terrain, you can still use it, but any of the special rules, just gone. Searing Desert wins. After this model makes a normal move, including if it uh, moves at the end of the shooting phase, pick an enemy unit that uh, has any models that <laughs> this model pass across, and roll a die, and a 3 plus take D3 model wound. So he has a swoop attack, basically. Um, Spirit of the Winds has uh, moved 12 inches at the end of the shooting phase, and then Wind Mage Symbiosis. In your hero phase, if this model's within 12 of any friendly wind mages, he'll do three wounds. So he's just got a built-in heal too. He's got no brackets because he's only got 10 wounds. And yeah, he just shoots out killing shots all the time. Uh, and in the generic version, two less wounds, same stats otherwise. Uh, its gun is exactly the same except its Ren's only minus two. Um, and then the melee is basically the same as well. Uh, I think just entirely the same. Still flies, still has into the gale, so it has its wound shrug and stuff, uh, and subtracts from pylons. Living Cyclone still does the uh, 3 plus mortal wounds and minus to hit. Spirit of the Wind still falls back uh, 12 inches in the shooting phase and still heals next to the wind mages. So for 250 points, this guy is just going to walk around shooting everything in range. Never, He's untouchable. Like, I don't know how you get into melee with this guy unless you do like a deep strike charge and hard roll a 9. This, this guy is incredibly hard to get into melee. Um, the Spirit of the Wind is at the end of the shooting phase, which also means you're sh like at any shooting phase. So you can't keep him in melee either. He falls back 12 uh, and he can charge later in the same turn. So if you do manage to charge him, right, and then get him into combat during any following shooting phase, he just runs away. He just leaves if he wants. Uh, and he just explodes you with shooting. And also you're minus to hit him. And also he has a wound shrug built in. Anyway, pretty great. Um, Yuri Lake Carol and the Purifiers are the same as now. All the endless spells are the same. And we're looking at which they didn't fix the root of petrification at all. It's both start and end of the movement phase. <laughs> um, and then we're looking at pitch battle profiles. So yeah, so the ballista is 100 points, artillery. Uh, wardens, 10, or 30, 10 to 30 uh, for 120 in their battle line. Uh, and then for each Orlan Warden, you can take a one Venari Orlan Sentinels units or Dawn Raiders units as battle line. Uh, Spirit of the Mountain, Alrus 340, the Stone Mage is 130, Elenian Elithor 260 for the people, but unique, this model can be concluded as an ally in any army that has an Order General, which is really cool. I might pick them up just to paint, actually, because they're just really nice. The Wind Mage, 120 points, uh, Light of Eltharian, 220, Lyrial Othran, the new Warden, he's 210, 
Uh, light bringers and purifiers are, sorry, light color and the purifiers are uh, 220. The Sinari Calagrave is 100, the Calathar is 140, uh, sorry, Cathalar is 140, and the Lore Seeker is 160. Uh, Severeth, the Lord of the Seventh Wind, is 300. Uh, Venari Bannerblade is 110, the Lord Regent is 150, Teclase is still almost 660, uh, Velinor is 360, Stormguider 100, Her, uh, the Hurricane Spirit of the Wind is 250, the Wind Chargers are 130 for 5, the Orland Sentinels are 140, um, sorry, and the Wind Chargers are Battle Line and a Heal on Army, period. So you get your Kangaroos as Battle Line if you just play that, that, that um, city, or great, great Nation, sorry. The Blade Lords, for each Sonari hero included in your army, you can take a Blade Lord unit uh, as a Battle Line unit. So basically, you take one of each, take the Lore Seeker, the Cathalon, and the Calgrave. They're all Sonari, and you can have your Blade Lords be Battle Line if you want. And they're 5 to 15 for 120, and the Dawn Riders are 5 to 20 for 130. The Oral of Temple is 120, the Oral and Legion is 120, the Blade Lord Host is 100, the Dawn Rider Lance is 120, the Hurricane Temple is 180, the Lumineth Battle Host is 50. Uh, the Star Shard Battery is 120, which I think that's pretty, pretty... If you're going to take those artillery pieces, take a bunch of them, and that's actually worth it for the extra shots. Because you're basically buying an extra an extra two bolt throwers worth of shots if you take four of them for less than the cost of two more bolt throwers and increasing their durability. Uh, the Teclean Vanguard is 80, the Twin Stones are 30, Petrification is 70, Sanctum is 30, and the Shrine is free. And your only allies are Eidneth Deepkin. You're hanging with the fish folks still, even though they've betrayed you to Marathi. And there it is, a look at Lumineth Realm Lords. Well, so what did we get? We got unstoppable shooting to go with our unstoppable magic. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's, they're just so good. Like they, they do, they're like the space marines of this game. Although, I mean, traditionally elves have all, like elves have always kind of been the superhumans in Warhammer. Um, they do everything really, really well. But they're also really durable in this edition, and the models are nice, and I think they're going to be really popular. Teclas is still bananas. You can deep think your other mages now to give yourself a Teclas cast if you want every other round. Um, and the foxes in the shooting are just... I don't know why you wouldn't take... I mean, we I, I was spitballing it earlier, just to myself, and four of the hurricanes... I don't even think you take the big one, just take the little ones. Four of them are a thousand points. You could take uh, the Cathalar in the tower. You could take, I mean, if you wanted, you could take the Objective Seeker. You could take the Lore Seeker to grab objectives and then shoot everything off that comes near him. You could take a Mage. I don't know if you need to. You just take the Wind Charger instead for the free built-in healing. And then uh, another Wind Charger, the, uh, uh, the Wind Mage, whatever she's called. Where is it? Hurricane Wind Mage for 120. So to get your battle, like you have, you have a thousand points worth of those foxes uh, to shoot with, and then you could take, you could take the ballistas too. Even <laughs> you could take three of them maybe, and then what's cheap? What's cheap fun battle line to just like stand around and and touch stuff? I guess probably the just the spears. You just take the spears, have the the regular um, battle line wardens or whatever be your spears. And they're 120. So for 360, and then just take a couple of like mini heroes because you don't really need the heroes because you're just gonna kill everything with shooting and then duck back to heal. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of neat things you can do with a shooting army like that. I think it would just be obnoxious. They only have eight wounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but five wash wound shrug, and then they're almost impossible to ever get into range because they're just gonna shoot and fall back and shoot and fall back and shoot and fall back and pick apart anything that can hurt them, and also shoot anything that's gonna be gonna be able to actually come near you and shoot you and fight you. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of neat things in here you could do. Two of them maybe, maybe not four. Four four's going too far. Five hundred points. Two of them seems like just a good. You combine them with the uh, the wind mage, and you just got these two incredibly annoying, um, like shooting pieces that you're never really going to be able to stop. If you drop, if you're gonna take two, then take one as Severeth, I guess, and take the three hundred point one too. Because being able to scour train features clean is bananas. So yeah, I what I like about this book is. There's some craziness now that isn't techless, right? It gives a bit more dimensionality because right now building around techless is what everyone's doing because it was there were so few units in the initial book that you could only really do that. But being able to take a Windrider army is neat. Um, the Fox shooting army is going to be really cool. I think there's going to be some some really neat mobility armies that you can do with these guys because the Fox is super durable and also the Windriders are fairly durable and also super fast with shooting. 
So I, it, it doesn't necessarily encourage you to make a mixed army, but there's some other kind of like gimmicks that you can make in this book too, which I think is going to be neat. So anyway, uh, you can check out my review today also of Broken Realms Techless, which we'll just focus on the stuff that isn't in this book. And if you're coming there from here, obviously, there's your look at the Lumineth Realm Lords for stuff from that book. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you for more of GMG reviews. Fill in a mash. Have a I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future, who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.